Yeah, so that was kind of like my half-assed attempt at a Mandalorian costume, I guess. But today we're checking out a big recommendation from y'all over in the Philippines. So this one is called Old Plan Exodus. And I guess it's like a documentary about SAF-44, which I guess might be like a, a unit. I think it's like a police unit or something. But yeah, I definitely want to check it out because a lot of y'all were sharing it with me. And it seems pretty meaningful. So yeah, I figured we'd check it out. It's a little bit longer. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get right into it. So I'll get a little more comfortable and we'll check it out. Yeah, so this video is about 25 minutes long, but I'm okay with doing these longer ones every now and again, especially if all you guys are recommending it. Night of January 24, 2015. You guys ever hear dates and then try and think about where you were on that day? About 390 SAF commandos are on their way to an unfamiliar territory to carry out a classified mission. Damn, that's a, mission a lot of people. Which the SAF are the most capable of. Okay. The Special Action Force, or SAF, is an elite unit of the Philippine National Police. There you go. Okay. The members were chosen among a number of participants who had undergone a tough selection procedure. Hmm. The qualified members then received special and intense training to handle operations such as raids, hostage rescue, nice. and counter-terrorism. Okay. Maybe check out the Their unit Their involvement to end Kudita attempts in the late 1980s and the Zamboanga siege in 2013 are just some of the many accomplishments of the Special Action Force. I'm not familiar with any of those, to be honest. Months before this mission, an intelligence report, allegedly from the United States, revealed that two of the most wanted terrorists in several countries hmm. are currently hiding in the marshlands of Mamasapano, Maguindanao, Philippines. Okay. The objective. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the geography of the Philippines. Now, learning about the Philippines nowadays and sort of where like all the like terrorism hotspots were, it seems like most of it was in like the southern Philippines. But I'm not sure if you guys are from the Philippines or if you just know a little bit more. Is there like a sort of centralized location where all these like terrorist hotbeds were, or is it kind of just like pockets here and there? Because again, I'm not really too sure. Of the SAF is to infiltrate and capture terrorists Abdul Basit Usman and the main target. One of FBI's most wanted terrorists, okay. Zulkifli bin Hill, alias Marwan. Marwan is a Malaysian terrorist who specializes in bomb making. Mm. Together with his group, Marwan was involved in a number of attacks and plots in Southeast Asia, including a reported plot targeting the Pope during his visit in the Philippines. Why the Pope of all people? It was averted. Jeez Louise. This I mission, guess however, sends a message, was not but... new to the SAF. Efforts to capture Marwan can be dated back to 2010, wherein nine consecutive attempts have been made, but none were successful. Damn. Most missions were aborted, and in some cases, Marwan was able to escape. Okay. But this time, Slippery dude, officials huh? responsible of the operation were confident that the outcome would be different. All With right. this confidence in mind, the SAF commandos prepares as they get closer to the site. Nice animation to carry out too. The mission. A mission that will forever be remembered by Filipinos. A mission named Oplan Exodus. And real quick, I didn't say it, but the YouTube channel that uploaded this is called Traj Diaries. I guess like tragedy diaries. So I gotta say, I'm liking the animation. So I might have to see if there's any other sort of military related videos that this channel produces, because it seems pretty high quality stuff so far. There you go. <laughs> nice music too, hopefully it's not like copyright. We'll see. It's like old like N64 vibes here with the graphics and whatnot. Nice. Divided as special action companies, the SAF commandos will follow a planned route and will position at assigned locations on the map. That seems pretty far. <laughs> the 84th SAC or Seaborn, which is composed of 41 commandos, is the team assigned to capture Marwan and his man. Okay. They will be the first one to advance and will control the movement of other SACs. Just behind Seaborn, the 55th SAC 
composed of 36 commandos, will become the blocking force, which will serve as the primary Again, support and security a lot of for Seaborn. The remaining sacks, which are composed of more than 300 SAF commandos, will serve as support groups, securing the exits of both sacks. So I'm noticing there's not like a really... There's not like a cordon set off. I'm not really sure like the major avenues that they could take as far as the roads, but I'm not sure if there's really even many roads here. It kind of just looks like marsh or farmland kind of stuff. So I don't know. I would imagine some of these guys would have like pushed out and like on the sides to try and set up some sort of cordon in case they try and get some some other like alternate evac route. So, okay. Meanwhile, the 43rd sack will position along the drop off point securing both ends of the highway. Okay, makes sense. Lock down the highway. The plan was estimated to be done at a specific time. However, this was unlikely. As the terrain leading to the targets was a huge obstacle for the commandos. The well, marshland was covered with vast areas of cornfields and deep rivers. Okay, yeah, that's a lot of ground to cover. I'd imagine that would go Moreover, into the planning though. It was not their territory. Oh. Throughout the marshland, several armed groups are situated at certain areas, the largest okay. of which are the BIFF and the MILF. The BIFF mm. is a militant organization based in Mindanao, seeking okay. to have an independent yeah, Islamic sense. state for the Muslim minority. Meanwhile, the mm. MILF, also a group in Mindanao, is an organization which an seeks to acronym, separate but... from the central government. Yeah, I'd imagine a lot of this would have gone into the planning, but hopefully they got some sort of intel to, you know, know if there are certain pockets of people here and there, or if there's like any sort of observation posts, or if there's any patrols that frequent the area. Because, yeah, again, there's a lot to go into play. I'm, I guess it sort of makes sense that they couldn't necessarily cordon off the area if that was all like enemy territory. But, I mean, hopefully they got some sort of information to find out where these guys might be. In a region for the Moro people. Fortunately, the government and the MILF are currently in an ongoing peace talks, prohibiting both parties okay. from doing aggressive actions, basically a ceasefire. Well, that kind of helps, but it's also confidential. Due to the mission <laughs> there you being go. <laughs> the MILF were not informed of the operation. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of hard though, huh? At about 11 p.m. of January 24, Upland Exodus commenced. Nice. Okay, so it's a nighttime raid. I mean, the night vision should help if the bad guys don't have of it. Seaborn, led by Superintendent Raymond Train advances all right yeah that's a long movement though especially under night vision all you need is some dude with a spotlight and it's you know it's gonna be rough for them the remaining special action companies are waiting for the right time to depart as their movements dependent on the movement of seaborn okay makes sense however due to an unfamiliar terrain and the strong current of the rivers Seaborn did minor changes to the planned route. Okay, so they're actually... This caused a delay in the departure of the 55th sack Wait, and the huh? remaining... Are they, are they actually traveling by water? I know, I know they, they're called Seaborn, but did I hear that correctly? Minor changes to the planned and the movement of... Due to an unfamiliar terrain and the strong currents of the rivers, Seaborn did minor okay. changes to the planned route. I don't get it. Are they just walking against the current or something? This caused a delay. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. The departure of the 55th sack and the remaining support groups. Oh, so they're what, they're lagging behind now? I mean, they should have stayed pretty close if it was that unfamiliar and uncertain. Okay. 4 a.m. So, seems like they're either gonna start this right before the sun comes up, or maybe even right after. Okay, so it seems like they're kind of staged and ready to do something. Okay, nice. So I guess the movement went pretty well. That's good. So setting a foothold across the river makes sense. 
but I feel like they're kind of getting spread thin without the rest of the support. So is it just the 13 that's actually pushed across now or? It's a lot of people going in for just these guys to be surrounding the hut. Oh man, you know their adrenaline is spiking right now. Oh my gosh. Damn, that sucks. Oh, and now everyone's gonna be awake. Marwan's hut was covered with improvised traps. Damn, that sucks. And now once you got a casualty, then you start running your aid and whatnot and it takes a little bit more out of the fight. Yeah, hopefully they have some support, like, right up their ass, because uh, they're just perforating the hut, though. The audio in this is Meanwhile, pretty solid. hidden from sight, Abdul Basit Usman escapes. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah, they should have, like, pushed up some more guys. The gunshots awoke the armed groups in the area. Oh, now it's going to be a big mess. Jeez. Hopefully they get some security on the guys that went in. I mean, they had a lot of people that were like locking down the highways and whatnot, but I would have imagined more people would have pushed up to provide security for them. Seaborne had successfully neutralized one of the world's most dangerous men. Hell yeah, good stuff. Without delay, they took a DNA sample. <laughs> okay. And a picture was taken. Nice. Hopefully they can get out of there quick. A SAF commando then sent a text message to the command saying, Mike won, bingo, which meant that the target was neutralized. A text message? Okay. Triumph was felt among the commandos outside as they've heard the word bingo. Okay. But that triumph won't last. Is it just those 13 as still? As Seaborn attempts to unite with the 55th SAC for the exit. Hmm. Oh man, dude. They were already surrounded. Yeah, no kidding. Meanwhile, the 55th SAC, which was delayed for hours, attempts to reach their designated Hours? Whoa, no way. Those guys are so much further behind. Are they not rocking night vision or something? Oh, dude, that sucks. Hopefully we don't get held up with some other As groups. they were navigating through the cornfields of Barangay to Canalipao. They heard men shouting around the area. Ooh. It's cornfields too. You never know what you're gonna walk up on. Immediately, they formed a defensive perimeter. All right, good move, good stuff. Yeah, the audio in this video Across is the river, they saw MILF members gathering near the bridge. Ooh, that's not good. The 55th SAC waited. Their only cover was the cornfield and the darkness. Well, if I got night but vision. not for long. If I got night vision, that helps. I'm not sure if they have, uh, okay, well, doesn't help so much now. Yeah, if they had night vision, it could have helped a little bit, but I'm not sure what kind of setups these guys were rocking as far as like night vision optics or even IR lasers. Oh, and now it's going to be level playing field. And besides the difference in weapons and gear and whatnot and overall discipline. But these guys know the area better. Could get pretty scary. All right. Damn, dude. Oh, now they're getting freaking surrounded. As dawn breaks, the 77 commandos of the 55th SAC and Seaborn 
are to be surrounded by over 1,000 combined members of the MILF, what? BIFF, and- Well, okay, there had to have been some sort of intel for this to like sort of know how many enemy forces were in the area because a thousand and you're only pushing up like 77 for that like initial like cordon and assault. Yeah, I mean, that's not, that's not gonna be good for these guys, especially when it's happening like this where they're sort of getting surrounded and whatnot, so. Ah, oh, man. Another private armed groups. At the location of Seaborn, it was a fight for survival. Damn, yeah, there's a lot of freaking bodies Thinking they were in the unmatched area. by the unknown number of armed groups shooting at them, they decided to retreat to the river and took a different exit route to avoid the enemies. Good move. Okay, sir, being but then again, or something. they got surrounded. Ah, damn, dude. During this time, the SAF commandos of the 55th SAC and Seaborn continuously called for reinforcements. Yeah, okay. This led the remaining special action companies to advance, but then eventually retreated as they were met with gunfire. What? You gotta just start pushing everybody At the same up there. Time, the situation reached SAF Director Hetulio Napenas Jr., the commander who oversees the operation. Damn, I mean, you get like the security set and on the evac, and Napenas then you push everybody sends a else message to the Army 6th Infantry Division commander, informing him about the operation. Damn, now they're trying to get the army involved. However, according to the commander, he did receive a message, but it did not mention the need for reinforcements. What do you mean? I don't get it. What's happening here? Why is there such a big lack of communication here? Like there's just a, or a big mi miscommunication or something. It seems like if someone's tried to talk to you about, hey, like we have an issue over here, you don't really need to read between the lines. I mean, if you're reading somebody else out, you're probably trying to get reinforcements or something like that. It's not in posture, like some sort of quick reaction force in case it's, it's needed or something. But yeah, I don't know. I, I can't imagine they would have been that, you know, implicit with how they're communicating. Lee. The said commander, Major General Pangilinan, sent out a reinforcement team after details of the ongoing firefight have circulated. Moreover, Pangilinan orders the Brigade General of the AFP to notify the MILF of the situation, okay. which again was in an ongoing peace talks with the government. Yeah, I mean, why are and they even getting involved if they're trying to do peace the talks? Army arrived. They're not attacking them. According to the army, they saw the remaining SAF commandos just sitting on the highway. The army then asked for what? coordinates from two SAF commanders to locate the 55th SAC in Seaborn. What do you mean? Why Unfortunately, are they sitting? They don't know. Oh my gosh. Who's the commander in charge of this? Like, what is After he doing? After figuring out the location, the army advances. How are they letting their freaking buddies get like torn to pieces while they're just sitting on the highway? I don't get it. If you don't know, try and do something. Try and get in contact with someone. The commander should be in charge of like plotting where everybody is. Like it seems like there's nobody on the ground to tell them what to do. I don't get it. It's kind of aggravating here. But the remaining staff members reportedly refused to go with them. According to a report, there was no command telling the staff what to do. So you just gave up your camaraderie and brotherhood? At 9 a.m., the army received a call from Seaborn, My gosh. informing them that they are on a hill in Barangay Tucanalipa, surrounded by the MILF. However, AFP Chief of Staff General Katapang ordered his men to not engage the MILF yeah, because okay. they don't want to endanger the yeah, ongoing it's a hard peace situation. process. I mean, okay, but also if they're not really listening... The army listening, then proceeded to extract them they're not that serious but along about the, peace the way, talks. they were also met with gunfire <sighs> and forced them to retaliate. Yeah, well, hey, screw those peace talks. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want to listen, then you don't want to listen. Jeez, 12 o'clock, okay. So this is after, what, like seven hours already? Damn, dude. really frustrating.
How are you a member of SAF and you're just like, yeah, no one's telling us to go and help him out, so we're not gonna do it. I don't get it. Good grief. What is your job? What is your purpose? <laughs> it's so annoying. Wow. Yeah, okay. I think they can go ahead and say screw those peace talks at this point. Damn, mortar fire too? They got mortar fire? Where's like the military? Like, I figured they'd have some, some mortars, some arty or something. And these guys are just... All about their lonesome the too. firefight sucks. lasted for several hours until the army decided to deploy white phosphorus at about 5.30 p.m. Oh snap. The white phosphorus are used for cover and as markers for the artillery team to calculate their there location, go. minimizing the risk of a friendly fire. Okay, good stuff. As the armed groups saw the white phosphorus at about 6 p.m., the firefight stopped, and the MILF announces that their fighters had withdrawn from the area. Okay, well, they're finally listening, I guess. What about the other guys? Shortly after, the search for the 77 commandos began. Jeez, Louise. Was it now it's nighttime again and they're doing the search? That's so annoying to hear about. Damn, that one, so there was one that made it out. I wonder how many casualties these guys got. Damn, dude. Yeah, they were, they were out there, they were deep too. Oh my god, dude, are you kidding me? Dude, imagine being those dudes that just refused to go in and then, what is it, Christopher Lalan? Lalan? He just ends up walking out on the highway. Like, how would you respond to that? Like, what would you feel? I, I would imagine these guys would, it, like, if, if you're refusing to go out and then this dude comes out and he's literally the lone survivor, like, you, you have to just quit your job at that point. Like, refusing to help this dude out, and now all of his buddies are dead. <sighs> Damn. That's rough. But the story goes deeper than it seemed. All right, let's Investigations hear done after the incident uncovered something behind the people responsible of the operation. They it was revealed job. that former president and also the commander-in-chief Benigno Aquino III allowed his close friend former PNP chief Alan Purisima to participate and allegedly gave him control of the operation. Okay. However, the said PNP chief was suspended at that time, currently being investigated for an alleged graft case. What? Even so, Aquino entrusted him the operation along with the SAF director, Hetulio Napenas Jr. So it's just corruption. Moreover, man. it was reported that Deputy Director General Leonardo Espina was supposed to be the one who had the authority to oversee the entire operation. But due to an unknown reason, he was excluded what and was only mean? informed on the morning of January 25. How does this big classified operation go down and then people have no idea who's actually a part of it and who's actually, you know, leading certain things. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter if the commander in chief is sort of pulling strings and he's probably going to be the one overseeing everything. And if he's, you know, pulling his buddies to do certain things, then I guess nothing really matters at that point. With the number of revelations being brought to light, the officials responsible of the operation fell into a blame game, taking turns in blaming one another. Good grief. 
in regards to the MILF, questions arise as to why Marwan was near if not within their territory. Hmm. During the Senate probe on the incident, Senate Majority Leader Alan Peter Cayetano fired questions directed to the MILF, asking about their alleged role in providing a haven for the terrorists. Yeah, no kidding. But all of these were denied by the MILF, insisting that Marwan took refuge within the BIFF territory. Well, this I mean, they was still... supported by Chief Peace Advisor Teresita Deles, saying that the MILF already ended ties with the terrorists. So why are they attacking the police, dudes? Like, I don't get it. In a it. different investigation, autopsy reports done by the PNP revealed that most members received a fatal shot to the head. Oh my gosh, dude. This can be done by the snipers. However, Probably this not. also suggests that some were shot up close. This theory was confirmed when a video circulated through social media showed a brutal killing of one SAF commando up close. That's so annoying. How's Besides that not, like, the investigation off? done by the government, the MILF conducted their own. According to their investigation, the MILF lost 17 of their members and three okay. civilians had died. In regards to the Upland Exodus, the MILF said that they were not aware of the operation. Uh -huh. And even with the ceasefire prohibiting both parties from doing a Well, sure, actions, but why are they going and attacking them anyway? That they were not able to identify the SAF commandos and claimed that the said commandos fired at them first. Hmm. These claims led people to debate if this was a case of a misencounter or just pure massacre. The Senate, which condemned the manner of how the SAF members were killed, labeled the incident as massacre. But the Commission on Human Rights chairperson disagrees with them, stating that categorizing the incident as a massacre is excessive. Is it excessive? What do you mean? How is that excessive? Okay, well... Man, those guys go out and freaking take this dude down and then they just get left in the dark. Good grief. So there's a lot of like unanswered questions I feel like for this. Wow, look at that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wonder if there's like more information out there. It seemed like this video did a lot of research, but <sighs> Damn an eight year old girl, that's jacked up, dude. I don't know what annoys me the most, to the be honest. The tragic events of January 25, 2015 cannot and will not be forgotten by the Filipino people. Hmm. During that day, families lost a father, a brother, a son, and a hero. Thus, questions and outrage remain. Sure. Who was at fault? Who is to be blamed and has justice already been given mm. but yeah, one thing is certain and will surely be remembered the bravery and sacrifice of the fallen 44. Hmm. okay so that's the staff 44. Hmm. damn dude Yeah, it's really frustrating. I don't know what, like, I don't know what annoys me the most, though. Like, the fact that their buddies just left them out there without going to hell. Or the lack of answers, or just the corruption that was probably involved. Hmm. All right, damn. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to think about that. It's yeah, it's kind of it's just brutal. It's really annoying to hear about, and it's kind of like mind blowing to think that 
you have people in the same unit, like other commandos that didn't want to go out there because there wasn't like any sort of leadership. Like, I, I get it. You need some sort of intel to push out, but you got to do something. Like there had to have been some plans or some knowledge within like the general populace of where these guys were going and what they might be up against. So I don't know. I guess like the sort of mission commands, like the, the fact that they didn't sort of take what was going and sort of go off of that, like sort of adapt to the situation. It's kind of frustrating to hear about, but yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of things that seem to be like that just went wrong or kind of got swept under the rug. So I'm not really too sure. I definitely like to do my own research about this and sort of check it out and see what sort of happened with that. But this is the first time I'm, he I'm hearing about this. And I guess, you know, it, it's not it's common for stuff like over in the Philippines to really make its way over to the U.S. too much. But this seems like a pretty big deal. The fact that all this went down. And again, 2015, I was in the military and I was in the military for a few years at that point. So if something like this did come up, I probably would have caught on to it. But yeah, it's kind of frustrating to hear about. And I, again, I don't really understand how they could just leave their, their commandos like that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I do appreciate the recommendation. It was a really awesome video to check out. It's, it's kind of cool to sort of spread this, you know, story with everybody else and sort of learn about it myself. But yeah, I do appreciate the recommendation. Hopefully you guys were able to appreciate the video. And if you know anyone that was involved, then yeah, if you can provide some sort of context or more information, please throw that down below. But yeah, pretty fascinating to hear about. But definitely let me know what you guys think about this video. If you have any other recommendations, throw them down below. You can head down to the Discord and recommend stuff there as well. But thank you guys for watching. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.